actually apply for a credit card to get enough money to buy the, the kit at the time, which I suppose you probably can't really do anymore anyway, the way the situation has gone. Um, started off on foot as well, and um, so obviously I had to build a very local um, customer base because I was um, limited into the amount of areas that I could actually cover. Um, so I did stay very, very local at the start anyway and just built it up from there. But um, despite um, starting on foot, working on a very part-time basis, um, I still made just under 640 euros in, in my first full month in the business, um, which at the time for me was enough to cover bills and basically make sure that I wasn't kicked out of my apartment because um, at that stage like I just didn't have any, any extra money apart from what Clean Easy was bringing in. Um, so it, it definitely helped me out an awful lot. I um, built up my customer base local anyway. Um, I went out to Hammer and Tongs and got uh, built up the customer base as quickly as I possibly could. After five months in the business, I was able to get myself a little car. Um, nothing fancy about it, but um, it, it, it made me, it allowed me to get around an awful lot easier, a lot quicker, and uh, to cover an awful lot more more ground, um, which made it a lot easier for me again to um, to expand on on my customer base. But um, over the um, the next eighteen months after I had joined, like I, I continued to, to to build a customer base and try and get in as many customers as possible. That was the way I was doing it. Um, I was building it on serious um, high retail. Um, wasn't very consistent at sponsoring. Um, Every now and again, I get a team member in. Um, to be honest, they were probably falling. Well, they were falling off probably an awful lot quicker than they were coming in because it was so inconsistent at the time. But um, in, at the start of 2007, I, I, I made a decision that I was going to get serious um, about about the business. Um, it was in Birmingham, the New Year showcase event. I had decided at that stage, before the event had even had even um, started that I was going to be aiming for the European Conference. Didn't know where it was, I didn't care. I just decided I was going to go there. Um, to be honest, when I actually saw the video, Michael would probably be disappointed, but um, it didn't inspire me one bit at all when I saw the video. But like, it didn't matter. I had made the decision that I was going to go one way or another anyway, so it did, I didn't really care where it was. Um, as far as I was concerned, it was, it was a free holiday. Um, that was up for grabs and I hadn't been on holiday in a couple of years so um, I wasn't going to miss out on another one again that year. Um, so obviously at that stage I increased the, the amount of work that I was going through um, tried to increase the amount of leads that I was generating by doing extra activity and things like that. So um, it, took, it took a lot of work anyway to, to, to get everything up and running. But basically um, the the last um, months for the qualification were periods 7, 8 and 9. Back then you actually had to qualify <coughs> consecutive months, um, which has slightly changed now. You can kind of do 1, 4, 5 or something like that now, but back then you had to do consecutive months. Um, so I had actually left it till the, the very last possible time, which uh, most people know that I, I do that quite regularly anyway. Um, but by, by the end of period 6, which was the month before my last possible chance to qualify um, for the International for the European Conference, I was qualifying at 15% um, and I had three active team members, one of which was me. So um, didn't have a huge team in place at the time, but um, that, that didn't stop me anyway. I had made the decision that I was going to go so basically, um, I had to get to gold. So at that stage, with the last uh, period, period six finished, uh, there was only one possible way that I was actually going to get to gold. And um, it meant that I had to increase my retail because I just didn't have enough team members in place um, to, to, to qualify or to get, to get enough workload done. Um, I don't know now if you can actually see those figures there or not, but um, Basically, in period seven of that month there, you can see I've got about, what, about six, 16 members had actually come in, but um, I had turned over myself just over 5,000 points, um, which was quite a lot at the time, eight and a half, eight, eight, just under 9,000 euros um, worth of, of turnover. <coughs> period eight, um, again, I had to increase the amount of work that I was getting through 
and um, you can see they're like 11, over 11,000 turnover, pers that's personal retail. Um, and the disappointing thing about that was I wasn't even Gavin Scott's top retailer that month. <laughs> Somebody else actually beat me. I was quite annoyed by that as well, to be quite honest, because that would put me in a lot of work to get there. Um, I was putting out roughly, on average, 500 catalogues a week. Um, and generally, by the time I reached week four, 500 catalog, catalogues wasn't enough. So it was always kind of doubling up again on week four, um, quite often from maybe eight or 900 catalogues um, that I would have been putting out on week four just to get the last few points in. Um, period nine, there you can see again, well over 4,000 personal points, again, seven and a half thousand euros. Um, there was a bit of a glitch in there as well in period eight, which was the month that I had done the huge turnover. Um, I realised that the 500 catalogues a week that I was putting out wasn't enough to get me there, so I had ordered 500 extra catalogues, um, had 450 of them actually out, and I started getting a couple of phone calls from my customers, um, letting me know that there were sterling catalogues. Um, so I, I was after spending a good few hours packing up 500 sterling catalogues and putting them out to the customers, but. Um, it was a bit of a glitch. Um, I had drew a bit of a wobbler at the time now, to be quite honest. Um, got off my upline anyway, and I told them to give out to Cat Car Michael down there. So uh, Michael got it all sorted in the end anyway, but a uh, bit of a wobbler at the time anyway. Like, didn't, didn't quite need that when I was trying to put out a thousand catalogue, but uh, we got it all sorted out anyway, um, which was fine in the end anyway. Obviously, because I was doing such um, high retail, I was obviously making the big money as well. You can see there, period seven, three and a half thousand, period eight, four thousand four hundred nearly, period nine, over three thousand um, personal income. So like, huge workload that I was putting in, but I, I was obviously getting well paid for it, um, which was fantastic as well. Like I was putting in probably about 15, 16 hours a day of pure catalog work be it collecting the catalogues, putting them back out, turning them over, or at then towards the end of the week, which was delivering the products, which was which was brilliant for me. At least I got one day off when I didn't have to look at catalogues, um, which was fantastic at the time. But a um, huge, huge amount of catalogues that I was I was working with at the time. I did qualify for the Olympic Games. Uh, that's me in there anyway, a little arrow. Just thought it might be a lot easier to find me using that anyway. Um, fantastic day that we had at the conference there at the Olympic Games. Um, donkey polo, quad racing, archery, um, mini football. <coughs> fantastic um, events that we, we had there. Well worked, um, well worked it when I actually got there. Like even though the video at the time didn't inspire me, uh, it was a completely different situation when I was actually there. Like you, it's very hard for anyone to tell you what it's like. Um, Really, you just have to be there yourself to see what these conferences are like and see how well you're treated. Um, like you're, you're treated like royalty, and, and at the time, like, and I know um, I'll never be on as good a holiday again until the next clean, easy holiday that I'm on, because these are the type of holidays that normal people like ourselves just would never be on and would never be able to afford to do it. I got the chance to tell my story as well when I was over there in Marrakesh. Um, it was a fantastic opportunity for myself. Like it was great to to be able to get up on stage and, and, and just tell tell my own story. Like I'd been just just over two years in the business, so I was still quite new at the time. Um, but it was fantastic like, to get the opportunity anyway to to tell my story. Um, that's at the end of what the gala night. Uh, thankfully, the picture doesn't come out too well there, but you can't really see, I'm, I am completely hammered there anyway. Um, but the, the other funny thing about it was um, the 500 sterling catalogues that I was telling you about, um, the other guy that's in the picture there, he actually got 500, Euro, 500 Irish Euro catalogues the same week that I got the sterling catalogues. So basically I got his boxes and he got my boxes. And the weird thing about it was both of us had done the exact same thing, we had retailed our way to gold and both of us ended up in Marrakesh and we, we happened to meet there and um, so it was a, a crazy coincidence that 
I don't think anybody would have been able to predict anyway, but um, it was fantastic. Uh,